Dr. House, I'm Doug Swenson's wife. This is environmental nutbag. Got a kid, too. His neck. It's torticola. Reaction to the chlorpromazine. Crunchy. Why does being called crunchy necked sound like a creative insult? Like I would be quite unhappy if someone called me a crunchy necked smooth brained invertebrate crustacean. Very excited to be reacting to House MD season 5 episode 21 Saviors. On this channel we are reacting to all 177 House videos. This will be episode 111. Let's see if I can get the diagnosis before House does as a doctor working in London. Coal is the dirtiest energy on earth. Susan? Susan, you okay? She has no pulse. Either unhook your arm or I'm gonna break it off. Either way, this protest is over. All right. What happened? You passed out. We'll be back! I can't stand up. I need to push back our getaway. No, you don't. Found you aboard. Perfect size to learn on. O'Neill from Philly General wants me to get a patient in to see House. What's the mystery? The nutcase spends all his free time wreaking havoc at toxic waste dumps. We need to do a vestibular caloric test to see if the balance problem starts above or below the neck. Injecting ice water in your ear. They use over 30 pesticides to grow commercial flowers. I think the medical industry would be a lot Concerned more... Concerned with medicine? Feels like I'm tumbling head over heels. <laughs> Who could have known that chaining yourself to a tractor for 14 hours wouldn't be good for your health? Either way, it seems like Cameron has still managed to go surfing just on a tidal wave of sidewalk pizza. But why was she injecting ice water into our climate captain's hearing holes? It's called the caloric reflex test and it examines the vestibular ocular reflex. Basically, our inner ear holds an understanding of where we are in space. If our head moves, our eyes need to stay fixed on what we are looking at. So if the head turns to the right, the eyes will stay to the left relatively to the head. We can mimic this head movement by putting cold water in one ear. That cold creates a current within the vestibular system, making our brain think the head is turning and therefore pushing the eyes away from that ear under normal circumstances. If the eyes go the wrong way or don't move at all, that's a huge indication that something is seriously wrong, like brain damage or even brainstem death. It's actually one of the tests used to confirm brainstem death before switching off a life support machine. The fact it caused our guy to start vomiting means he's probably got something else that's causing true vertigo, like benign paroxysmal positional vertigo or an acoustic neuroma. Either way, we don't Definitely need more clues. Tests made the patient lose his lunch, but his calorics are normal, his inner ear is fine, and he still can't balance himself. Carotid atherosclerosis could cause a loss of balance. Do a halter and a carotid Doppler. See if his heart skips for more than the spotted owl. <laughs> Sorry if this is screwing up the test. Been hiccuping a lot lately. Are you avoiding me? No. No sign of heart or arterial problems, but he's been hiccuping on and off for over a week. Hey, you want to still have the hearts for me, do you? Did his whole team just gloss over, see if his heart skips to more than a spotted owl? His genius is wasted on them. That writing's stronger than a bowel motion after prune juice. I give my one-year-old prunes, trust me, I know. So what's been causing our nature nurturers hiccups for the last week? Well, hiccups are usually your body's reflex to try and get food down your throat and air out of your stomach. It serves an even greater function in other species though, as early amphibians who can breathe in air and water needed the hiccup to switch breathing systems. The hic closed the epiglottis, which sealed the lungs when the animal entered the water, then redirecting the water to the gills rather than the lungs. Whoever says humans are interesting clearly doesn't understand ancient frogs. In humans though, this reflex is mediated by the diaphragm or from where the diaphragm ultimately gets its signal from, the brain. So what could he have that would cause both disturbing hiccups and balance issues that wouldn't show up on your out of the box scan? Okay, two theories. A tumor close to the diaphragm could be causing local irritation and sending off signaling molecules which are messing with the brain's balance centers. Like a squamous cell carcinoma at the base of the lung could release parathyroid hormone cranking up the body's calcium that then leads to the dizziness and nausea and even confusion causing him to tie himself to a tractor. Okay, just about the tractor thing, but the rest of it is possible. Theory two is that his predilection for spending extensive periods of time in toxic areas has exposed him to a rare parasite that has decided to relocate its whole family within the balance centers of the motherboard on his shoulders. That could cause the hiccups as well. Echinococcus could do it. If he was fed vegetables that were contaminated via close contact with sheep or dogs, then that would cause it. Spending most of his days with his hands tied, his hands are tied 
tied when choosing how to eat his food and therefore how hygienic it is. This is especially true when you are simultaneously causing a massive inconvenience to the person feeding you, giving them little motivation to have your food hygiene interests at heart. I like it, I'm going for Cerebral Echinococcus as my first diagnostic guess. Question for you smart people, how often do you really wash your hands before eating? Answers down below, we won't judge. Now let's get more clues. Pathological hiccups plus inability to balance, go. Patient is on a jihad against commercial flowers. He's picketed several nurseries. His name's Swenson. Scandinavians have an increased susceptibility to MS. Do a lumbar puncture to confirm MS. How am I supposed to do a lumbar puncture on a patient with intractable hiccups? <laughs> You and House have been talking about filling cut in the slot? I'm interested in knowing if Cameron's interested. Do you think Cameron's in love with House? That is a ridiculous question. Dr. House? I'm Doug Swenson's wife. He misses environmental nutbag. Got a kid, too. His neck. It's torticollis. Reaction to the chlorpromazine. Crunchy. Why does being called crunchy necked sound like a creative insult? Like I would be quite unhappy if someone called me a crunchy necked smooth brained invertebrate crustacean. Either way, I've seen my share of crunchy necks on cardiac surgery and it's usually from something called an air leak. It feels like bubble wrap when you press on the neck because air from the lung has leaked outside and gotten trapped in the fat of the neck and chest. Maybe he had pockets of air in his lung that were being managed well, then he was given the chlorpromazine to sedate him for the lumbar puncture, which led to the spasm and torticollis which is his head being fixed on one side. That air pocket that was living happily in his breathing bags then gets squeezed and turns his breath bags into leaking lungs. It does make it more likely that he has something local in his lungs that are causing his symptoms rather than something central in his brain, making my first theory about the cancer a bit more likely. Other conditions could be something like alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, which can turn the lungs small pockets into Swiss cheese and make these bubble wrap bursts way more likely. You could test for it in a blood test and could do a simple CT of the chest, which I'm sure the team will do. I wouldn't give up on the lumbar puncture yet though, as the brain wouldn't be fully absolved of its involvement just yet. I'd also be interested to know if his four-year-old son is unwell in any way, and if he has any family history of disease, as that could give some extra clues to his condition. It's interesting, you know, as in these medical dramas, they do heavily rely on investigations, as they're much more interventional and interesting, like sticking a tube through someone's groin up into their brain pipes, so you can test for a rare micro tumor or doing a spinal tap where a patient's hiccuping his way to permanent leg paralysis if the needle goes too far. I love the entertainment and drama of that and ultimately it is TV but in real life the history is actually 90% of the diagnosis. The investigations are then just to confirm or refute our impressions from the history. This is also part of the reason why many doctors get frustrated when they feel they aren't getting a good history from a patient because they can't remember things well or don't know what medication they took for example. It does complicate things, but then that is also part of the challenge that makes life interesting, uncertainty. We still have quite a bit of uncertainty here though, so let's see if we can get more clues before I jump in with more diagnostic guesses. Well, this is loss of balance, pathological hiccups, and a hole in his glorious steinum. Progressive systemic sclerosis? Start him on IV methylprednisolone for systemic sclerosis. You know what vacation means, right? Are you in love with house? You're marking your territory. When are you gonna stop this? I can't just quit. I love you. And I love our son. But why should he matter more than everyone else's? Excruciating ah! pain in his left leg, acute onset about 10 minutes ago. Ah! If it's osteomyelitis, an infection, eating weight is periosteum. Start him on IV antibiotics. Things are definitely getting spicy now. Sudden onset leg pain, a suspected hole in his chest, all while navigating the balance skills of a giant panda on ketamine. The team think it's now an infection of the bone, but why would that randomly happen with everything else that's going on? He could have multiple infections because of immunosuppression, I suppose, or an infection in his heart, which is slowly sending off septic clots to the rest of his body. That could explain this sudden leg pain, loss of balance, and even the hiccups. The patient also got worse just after being put on steroids, which would suppress the immune system, making an infection worse and helping to cause this random acute deterioration in his leg. How could they diagnose that though? If they listen to his heart, they might hear a murmur because of the infection sitting on one of the valves and he could start developing a fever. They could check with an ultrasound of his heart called an echo, but sometimes that looks negative unless you put a scope in their food pipe to get a closer view from there. That diagnosis is about as exciting as diluted vanilla, so what else could it be? Perforia could potentially do it in all fairness. Tetanus actually would be a crazy one as well. It can cause hiccups, 
muscle spasm and pain, and even balance issues as it slowly rips through the central nervous system. He could easily get it by having an open cut, which comes into contact with infected soil, and steroids would make it worse. If that's the case, though, it's very unlikely he will survive, but this is house not frozen, so tetanus has to be my second diagnostic guess. This episode title is called Saviors as well. How does that fit in? Let's get more clues. X-ray his legs to confirm osteomyelitis. Ankle, tibia, fibula, all look normal. No inflammation, no signs of osteo. His femur's fractured. That's impossible. It's the hardest bone in the body. And he broke it lying in bed. It'd be hard to find a guy outside Chernobyl who'd been exposed to more carcinogens. You two prep him for chemo. You and Chase are older. You decided that his single drawer of clothes, one drawer too many. He's gonna ask me to marry him. I don't want him to ask. Couldn't hurt. We're all a little freaked out. I don't want him to propose just because he's scared. Oh, dealing with the loss of a loved one can make people around them very scared. I not infrequently get patients coming to me who have never come to the doctor starting to request things like full body MRIs without any symptoms. When I get a request like that, I always have to probe deeper. And just a few weeks ago, a lady who was asking this told me that her brother from Brazil died suddenly at 65. Losses don't just cause reactions to someone's health anxiety though, it can generally cause behavior that seems reckless, impulsive, or even self-destructive. That can be things like quitting your job, wanting a divorce, or making risky stock market investments. So even though it's great Chase wants to propose, I can understand why Cameron wants it to be done for the right reasons. While we're discussing white dresses though, our patient's broken leg is missing a purple bruise. How how is that? He's fractured the femur at a young age, the strongest bone in the human body, a bone that can hold 30 times our body weight. Strange doesn't even start to cut it. Whoa, 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 whoa. wait a minute. Do you remember how I mentioned the lung cancer that produced the parathyroid hormone? The high calcium levels have to come from somewhere and it's stored in the bone. So even if there's no tumor in the bone directly, the parathyroid hormone could have caused osteoporosis, which stripped his bone of its usual powers. That could explain all the symptoms still and has to be my third and final diagnostic guess. We are locked in. She's got a headache. Fever, she's completely exhausted. Maybe when you travel on business, zip on down to that complimentary hotel spa. No. Pseudomonas folliculitis, skin infection from crowded and contaminated hot tubs, which you obviously use, but not with your husband. It's probably just residual bleeding from the surgery. Oh my God, what's happening? He's bleeding out. All signs point to cancer, but you can't blast a cancer you can't find. Prep him for total body irradiation. I'd rather make his cancer worse. Give him insulin-like growth factor, make any tumor or malignancy grow. His idea is better. I've lost my mojo. I'm losing my mind. You'd be crazy not to be off your game. It's gonna be okay. No, no. it's not gonna be okay. You're growing his cancer. VTAC and no pulse. Grab the paddles. This has nothing to do with house. It has nothing to do with me either. Let me know when I can come pick up my things. Nothing on the echo. That's normal. Come on, give me something. Give me a bad idea. Redo all the tests. In the meantime, open them up, put in a defibrillator. There's nothing healthy in that machine. Plant life is nature's answer to evil. So you have a garden. Whoa, 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 Wilson has been eating healthily the whole episode. Don't tell me that was a clue. So we know our patient has some kind of garden or allotment. So maybe it's his oh so natural project that is making him sick. Could they be making on how contrary to popular belief, natural doesn't necessarily mean better. So what green goodies could have pulled him from his green mission for this long? Hemlock. It used to be thought of as a treatment with sedative and antispasm effects, but having too much of it can cause poisoning. It's what notoriously was used by the Greek rulers to end Socrates' life, just as he said, the unexamined life is not worth living. Well, you can't get more examined than what I'm doing to this house series, so it's official. Socrates' words still hold true more than a thousand years after his death. How is hemlock so dangerous though? It contains a primary toxin called cotinine, which stops the nervous system working properly. It can start with balance issues, then lead to breathing issues, kidney failure, and muscle breakdown. That could explain the fracture if his kidneys were shutting down, but surely they would see that on his bloods or that he hadn't peed in three days. Can we treat it though? If he stops taking it, then he could survive and be supported using atropine to help reverse some of the effects until the body has a chance to clear the hemlock itself. It would fit here so well, but I'm out of diagnostic guesses. Question for you smart people. What would you want to ask Socrates if he was still alive today? Answers down below. You have a garden. No, we live in an apartment. Your marriage sucks. No, 
I love her. He loves a tree in Oregon more than he loves you. But he can't have sex with it. You gotta compromise that precious flower principle. Never. Once. Roses? Yes. You have sporotrichosis. Maybe. Lesion on your eighth cranial nerve knocks out your balance. We then spread it to your bones and heart with steroids and insulin-like growth factor. He's gonna be fine. I should never have postponed our vacation. I found the ring in your sock. I don't care what happens. I just want it to happen. Solved another case. Looks like you're not losing it after all. Yes, because it's totally normal to have your best friend's dead girlfriend whispering sweet nothings into your ears. I have a feeling this series is about to get even more interesting than it already is. But I mean sporotrichosis, I haven't even heard of that. I had to look it up, I have to admit. Seems like our environmental warrior compromised his principles of buying commercial flowers because he angered his wife. He wanted to make up for it and pricked himself on the rose thorn, which led to him getting a fungal infection which disseminated itself through his earthly vessel. It's also called rose handler's disease and is treatable with a cause of antifungals like itraconazole. Great episode and even had that twisted proposal. 7.5 out of 10 entertainment, 7 out of 10 accurate 7.2 out of 10 diagnosis. This episode doesn't make full sense until you watch the previous one where a dying husband gets a second wind.